Baba on his way. Good morning, I'm Simon Sporter, and I'm pleased to say I've got Hugh Phillips with me, who's going to talk to us about everything when you're choosing a tennis shoe. Welcome, Hugh. Hi, Simon. Thanks again for having me. That's a pleasure. So, Hugh, it seems to be a complete minefield on shoes. There are so many surfaces, there are so many shoes. How do you choose a tennis shoe? <laughs> right. Um, well, uh, how long have you got? Um, there's lots, you know, uh, as everyone knows, like running shoes, football boots, there's lots of different brands uh, of tennis shoe. Um, all the usual suspects are there, Nike, Adidas, Babala, Asics, all, all, all there. To choose the right ones with shoes, it's very much a personal preference in terms of fits and brand loyalty. There's that to start with. Um, after that, what you need to be looking at is... If you're a member of a club, what the primary surface is that you're playing on. So if you're uh, playing on artificial clay or clay courts, you want to look probably for a, a shoe with a clay court sole, which allows you to slide more easily. Um, however, that's made of a slightly softer compound. So if you're playing on hard courts, you don't necessarily want to wear those because they'll wear out too quickly. They won't be as durable. Hard court shoes are generally a bit more robust um and have uh, a more built up sole um to withstand toe dragging and, and and so on and so forth um the key thing to mention here with a tennis shoe is that it's very different to a running shoe so a running shoe a very lightweight um meant for running in a straight line Tennis shoes are more built up, more supportive, because even though, yes, you are running around a tennis court, you're stop starting, you're changing direction, um, you need more grip to control a stop, for example, and you're going to be dragging your feet when you serve or hit a forehand and so on. So a running shoe won't last. It, two reasons, it will just won't, it won't be durable enough, and also it won't add, give you the support that you need when running around a tennis court. So the average the average park player probably mm -hmm. goes up to a tennis court with a cross trainer at best and quite likely just a any a kind of, any kind of running shoe. So yeah. are they susceptible to injury more likely? Or potentially, yes. Cross trainers are a bit more similar to tennis shoes, just don't have the proper grip. You know, they have a different, uh, the you know, a, a much smoother grip underneath. But yes, running shoes, uh, you know, I'm not saying you're necessarily going to go out there and roll your ankle or something like that, you know, it, it, but you're more susceptible to that risk of injury running around a tennis court in a pair of running shoes than you would be in a pair of tennis shoes, just because they're they're built different. Um, and that's before you get into the myriad of different surface options and then things like that. But a, a running, also a running shoe, if you go in a park and it's got artificial clay courts you'll be sliding all over the place you just won't be able to you know you'll be struggling to stand up because it just doesn't have the right grip underneath but a trainer doesn't have the support on the two sides of the shoe like correct the shoe does no correct it, yeah. it doesn't it, it's it's not meant for stop start change yeah. of direction things like that okay so you talked about artificial clay or clay and the sliding mm -hmm. you talk about the hard court and the wearing and the uh the pressure on the shoe and the wear what yeah. about uh for example grass courts what about indoor courts so that's two more dimensions to the whole piece yes yes so um so grass uh albeit very rare uh, but you, you've got a nice picture of some behind you there um but grass has a have a different uh, surface shoe again. They have a flat sole generally with little pimples in the bottom, which give good traction in the grass um, without damaging the grass court too much as well, because that's obviously a key um, part of that for, for any grains groundsman speaking uh, listening. Um, but yes, yeah, so they have uh, a clay court will have a very deep herringbone pattern. So the clay can basically slide out the sides and they don't get clogged up. Hard court will have quite a built up, uh, very, all the manufacturers have various different treads and things underneath, but they'll be much more uh, grippy for the hard court. 
grass will have uh, the pimples uh, across the bottom flat, so with very little else on it, just little tiny little pimples. Um, soft pimples, crucially, not like AstroTurf boots, not like, which are hard nubs. These are soft uh, pimples. Indoor shoes, the classic indoor shoe, um, quite popular in Europe, uh, will have no sole whatsoever. They'll, they'll, they'll have a sole, but it'll be completely smooth. Yes. Um, and and that's uh, that's more aimed at carpet, so indoor carpet courts. Um, if you're playing indoors, but you've got tarmac courts indoors, like a lot of our indoor centres in this country, you'd want a hard court shoe, right? Rather than an in because they're actually an outdoor court indoors, if that makes sense. Whereas um, the 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 the, the, the when you see, uh, particularly on our website, if you see sh uh, shoes branded as indoor, they'll be completely smooth and they're really intended for sort of the carpet kind of surface where you get the, the they work better. But yeah. And is there a concern about marking in non-marking shoes? Obviously, it's not relevant on all surfaces, but is that something to consider? Yes, uh, it, it's relevant on most, most surfaces, to be honest. So all tennis shoes will be non-marking uh in their nature um it's more prevalent on hard courts um particularly the likes of acrylic and 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 uh the, the sort of the uh the general tarmac you see in park courts and things you know running shoes uh, most shoes these days can uh, generally have non-marking soles but but uh but but all tennis shoes will if you buy a specific shoe for tennis will be a non-marking sole okay and do you get what you pay for? You can get a running a tennis shoe starting from about fifty pounds, or potentially less if they're on on offer. But you can yeah. also spend up to one hundred and fifty pounds for a tennis shoe, and uh, more than that in some instances as well. Right. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I I would. It, it's like most things. Um, if if you're a um, you know if you play once a week in a park with friends um, socially. I would say you probably, unless you really want to, you don't need to buy uh, the latest Nike Vapor at 170 pounds. Um, they'll be very nice shoes, um, and they'll be very comfortable, and they'll be very supportive, and, and so on. Um, but they're meant for more serious competitive players um, who, who take it, uh, who, who who would benefit from having a shoe like that. Um, what I would say is, look, if you're just looking to spend about £50, look for one of the well-known brands. Because if you get a well-known brand at that price point, it's going to be just fine. Um, yes. So get a Nike or an Adidas or an Asics. And always look out in the sales as well, because probably shouldn't say this, but you know the manufacturers, they'll, they'll bring new shoes out, the same multiple versions of mul multiple colours of the same shoe throughout the year. You know, they'll bring out an Australian yeah. open version, then a French open version. The shoe is the same. So if you're not too fussed about having the latest colour scheme or the, the latest all-white Wimbledon version, um, sometimes you can pick up a, the, the, the previous colour at a, uh, quite a heavy discount. So. Yes. Okay, I understand that. That's really good. And it's difficult to answer this question, but, for example, when we talked about tennis strings, we talked about... Well, the average club player should be replacing their strings at least twice a year if they're yep. playing a couple of times a week. What about a tennis shoe, for example? A tennis shoe obviously wears out. You'd see if it got dirty and looked scuffed, but well, you wouldn't necessarily be looking for whether you might see that the sole has got a bit of damage to it. But would you actually notice the support had gone in the shoe? How do you um, do that? With it, it's, well, with the, with the shoe, um, it, the, the telltale signs are a bit more obvious than, say, you know, the strings having gone dead if you know what i mean um strings is very obvious if the string snaps you need to replace it with tennis shoes um you know if if you're obviously if you've worn a hole through them <laughs> that that's a good time to generally replace them um but if there's nothing visible in terms of that look at the the the, the undersole and look at the grip and if you're starting to find that the tread has worn smooth um because that can, that's probably the first thing unless you're a very heavy uh, a heavy 
on the other parts of the shoes wearing out the, the uppers and things like that if i'm talking about me personally i rarely sort of wear a hole through the top of the shoe it's more through the, the sole so and you can look through there you know you can have the most you know if you've worn them for a long time and you're playing on a hard court that tread that you've had there will eventually start to lose you know it will it will a bit like tires on a car eventually the tread will will reduce and you'll have you know if you've had a very um obvious herringbone pattern on the shoe for example to start with you can quickly tell that that's worn smooth and it's yeah. no longer deep it's now virtually flat that's a good time that's when you're not then getting the optimum traction on a, on a shoe but there's no there's no hard and fast you know you shouldn't change them every six months or something like that look at them and see what they they look like a bit like your tires you know if, if you're playing two or three times a week it'll be quite obvious you're wearing down the the, the tread underneath and just like you would do with any other shoe okay thank you very much Hugh for your time all about tennis shoes and we look forward to seeing you again soon no problem look forward to it thanks Anne.